Hey guys, thanks for joining me. In this video, I'll be taking you through the steps of setting up a Google AdWords campaign. Now, the first thing you need to do, obviously, is to understand uh, who you're trying to target and what your objectives are for setting up a campaign. That's going to help you to sort of choose what type of campaign to set up. Now, Google has, has a few uh, campaign types, as you can see here. Is a search network with display select, search network only, display network only, and those are the three primary ones um, that you're gonna find many people use a lot, and you'll be spending your, a lot of your time probably there. Then you also have shopping campaigns, which are the best way to create a product listing ads. So with that, you'd set up a Google Merchant Center account, then uh, submit your product feed over there and then create a shopping feed account to advertise your products on Google Shopping. And then there's the video account to advertise on YouTube and across the web. And finally, the universal app campaign, which is not so um, popular amongst advertisers, but you do as an AdWords uh, manager, I do find very few app campaigns. So most campaigns are gonna be search and display. Now, the sort of campaign that recently came into play that Google um, create, um, launched was Search Network with Display. Now, that sort of replaced the Search Network and Display Network campaigns. Now, this is not my favorite um, campaign type simply because I don't really like um, combining search with display. I prefer to separate those two and there's a few reasons for that. Sim I mean the first thing is to do with um, the objectives. Generally the search network works very um, differently from the display network and with the display um, you can run some um, direct response campaigns looking for people to purchase or download and so on but it's also very effective for brand awareness campaigns so I would ideally um, create a session network only and a display network only uh, campaign if I wanted to run um, ads on on these two type of uh, networks now the the display select um, the change is that um, Google has sort of um, it's it's not the full display network but specific quality uh, sites that you can um, your ad will automatically run on and you can create some image ads as well and include them in there so not my favorite way of um, launching um, Google campaign so I generally prefer to separate these two and now I'm gonna take you through the search network only campaign and so if you go ahead and click search network only um, the landing page for that would be um, the campaign settings so when you come here I mean it's quite straightforward it's just giving your campaign a name so you can call it whatever you like uh, maybe landmark properties oops properties for example and um, you can still whilst in here change your um, campaign type if you decide that you want to create a different kind of campaign so having chosen that um, the default is standard setting so that's just keyword text targeted text ads showing on Google search results now with all the features um, what that does is if you click all features it's gonna sort of delete that name that I created there and sort of start afresh um, so the the advantage with all features is that you have um, all the features that are available for the search network and if you come down here you will find that now you have tools like um, advanced settings tools like scheduling and you also have advanced location options now with the standard uh, setup if I go back to that you will see a difference when you come down here so you see the advanced location options is not there and you don't have edge scheduling and so on so 
I would say go with all the features because that's going to give you much more control over um, your campaigns. So it's important that you go, you you um, get a grip of all the features that are going to be helpful to you um, in managing your campaigns and reaching your goals. Now, um, the, there's obviously other different types of um, campaign features to add especially if you're running apps and if you want to run some dynamic search ads or call only ads especially for local businesses um, I'm assuming you're not at that stage yet these are more advanced or you're specific to businesses that go apps and maybe want to test out uh, dynamic search, search ads to start with so in terms of the search networks Basically, th these the two primary uh, types within that. Um, you've got the Google Search Network, which you're going to advertise on, which is Google, and the search partners. These are other um, large um, search engines which are part of the Google Search Network. And um, depending on, you could always test these out and see what sort of returns you get from your ads. So. Um, it's just running there maybe for some uh, time and say maybe you could say um, get 100 clicks if you've got no conversions or the conversion rates are low you can always change that so that's just something you may want to test and not exclude it outright now locations also is uh, another feature you need to get and be very careful with um, because I'm in the UK um, UK is the standard for me and that's based on my settings as well when I set up the campaign but you can target all countries and territories not something I would advise because different countries are different and uh, the way people search and for example if you're sh shipping worldwide um, your delivery rates are going to be different for different countries so you may want to set up different campaigns for that and not just include them in one sort of campaign so you also have other targeting options and the thing is you can either target a country a city a region or postcode and you can use um, radius targeting um, if you want to capture an area around a specific postcode or location and so on now a feature which i like a lot because I tend to find many advertisers make a mistake with this one is location option advanced now this is not as complicated as it may look basically this is the default is um, you will target people in your location or people who are searching for uh, products within your location or who show interest in your targeted location um, for your products or services in your location and Google puts that as recommended um, that would be good for example if you've got a hotel and you know that people um, are coming from uh, different places different countries or different cities and they're searching for hotels within your area so you may still want to target those people so you probably just leave it as that um, However, um, if you only want to target people who are specifically in your location, say in Northampton, for example, that would be the setting. So anyone outside of your location would not see your ads. Um, so this one is tends to be very important for many advertisers because, um, for example, if um, you're targeting um, the UK and somebody in France um, is searching for products in the UK and you know that you don't ship to France um, having it set to that setting means people in France are gonna see um, your UK ads but if you change it to people in your location you can um, block out a any uh, traffic which is outside of the UK that is searching for info products or services within your location you can also exclude locations so you may want to set it to people in or searching for products and so on in your location then uh, exclude um, uh, people in, in, in areas that you're not covering 
basically the excluded locations you would add them to your location options there as you're setting up uh, your campaigns so this is something we're thinking about and uh, it's very important that you get it right and make sure that you're not getting uh, clicks and sort of uh, impressions from people who are not in your target market and then um, setting bids um, the default is you can set your bids manually or you can let AdWords set your bids and this um, will um, help you to um, get as many clicks as you can uh, based on whatever sort of budget you have. I tend to want to have more control on the bids I set, especially if I'm using different mesh types. And then you've got the advanced options as well. So you could say AdWords will set my bids to help maximize clicks within my budget, then uh, put a limit on that, or you could use you could enable enhanced CPC. Um, however, this will only come up when you set up conversion tracking and you've got enough data over a 30 day period, I believe. Um, then it will set a bid based on the conversions that you have. Then you set your budget for your campaigns. If you're not too sure what to set, just start with a minimum budget, 10 pounds or, or something like that. Uh, something that you can afford um remembering that obviously over a 30 day period 10 pounds is going to be 300 pounds or whatever your currency is then as you come down here you've got delivery method the standard is you know, the default is standard optimized delivery and spending budget evenly over time so this is the standard setting if you wanted to accelerate your ads and show them as quickly as possible you could change it to that option but um, this one tends to be okay because it spread out your ads over the day and make sure you don't miss out on traffic later on in the day. Then these are more advanced features. These you sort of um, can set up, um, you can set these up in your um, shared library and so on, but I tend to set these up in the campaigns and make sure that I set them up specifically for each campaign. So that's very important to have and that's something that we're going to come to later on. And then you've got more advanced settings like scheduling your, your ads so you can uh, run them at specific times, um, specific days and so on. So you've got a calendar there to tell you, um, to help you sort of choose the times that you want to run them. Um, well, that's your end date actually when you want to end the, the campaigns. But if you wanted to um, schedule um, the times that your ads are going to run, it's over here. So you could let them run all days, or you could say run them Monday to Friday, or just Mondays, and then uh, decide maybe you want to do Tuesdays, and then change the times as well and say 4 p.m. and so on. So that all just depends on your understanding of your, your business and what it is that you're trying to achieve. And so those are some of the main uh, settings in uh, campaign settings. Uh, once you've set these up and you've chosen them properly, just go over them once more and just make sure that they are as you'd want them. Then um, obviously another feature is languages. Um, the default for me is in English and you can always add as many languages as you want. Um, always just keep it to one language per campaign. If you want to target other languages, create a different campaign and write ads in those specific languages because Google doesn't translate your ads for you. So that's something important to remember. Then just go ahead and create, save and continue uh, your campaign. Let's see, did we miss out anything? Yeah, I changed this end date. So no end date there. So it just tells you if there's any mistakes that need to be corrected. Then let's see if that goes ahead. Okay, so after creating the campaign basically has been created now you need to go into the 
add groups and the the key was that you're gonna set up so in the next video I'll be taking you through the steps of setting up your ad groups and your keywords and how to set up effective ads that are gonna get people to click to come through to your site and purchase and it's just gonna give you that ROI that is very essential for your business so thanks for watching this video and for listening and I hope you um, join me on the next one where I'll take you through setting up ad groups and keywords. Then after that, we're going to look at ad extensions and so on. And also in video two, we're going to look at negative keywords.